start, we'll head head to Corinne and hear from this guy. Hey everyone, we're out here in Corinne now, standing in an alfalfa field. This is one of the sites that we're doing some flood irrigation research in. Uh, recently, there's some land leveling that happened. They had some ditches put into pipe, and along the head of the field here, you can see we've got these alfalfa valves about every 15 feet. So a pretty good scenario for doing some of this research on. Uh, the things we're testing is, is a year of continuous flow where basically the farmer comes, opens this set and fills it till it gets to the other end, shuts it off and moves to the next set. So that's what's happening here this year uh, versus next year where he'll be set up to do surge flow. And we're doing a lot of different measurements with the water, including some soil moisture testing stations that we have along the length of the field. And that's going to help us understand the, the uniformity that we're achieving. And then also we're coming in, taking yield measurements, and then, and then from those we're also going to analyze the, the crop quality that we're getting at different parts through the field. So what the research is often showing happens with continuous flow is that you end up with, with a profile that looks something like this. Where this part is all full of, full of water. So you've been successful in filling the root zone, which is great. That's what we want to do. But on, on you know, a part of this field also, we've, we've overwatered. We've got all this water that's beyond the root zone. It's not really doing us any good. And in some cases can actually do some harm. And, and also uh, after the end of the field too, this water here isn't really doing us any good either. The, the tail water's coming off the end of the field. So you can see some, some areas that, that optimization could, could help out, yet not negatively affect their crops. Um, the other thing I like to think about with this, with this particular drawing is with this line here, I'll well, say we had a drier year and we couldn't put this much irrigation on, and we, so we have to shift that line that direction. Uh, you know, where we're, our, our ability to, to irrigate that entire root zone is now more limited and we actually might miss some of our money-making root zone here. Now what the research is suggesting with sur surge irrigation is that you can end up with a soil moisture profile. That looks something like this. And it accomplishes this through a series of surges or pushes of water down the length of the field. It's typically set up in, in quarters down the field where your first surge covers out to about your first quarter. And that water is and the water's cut off, the water can infiltrate in. And as the surface begins to, to dry, it actually has a sealing effect on the surface, which is important for each surge after. So when you send your second surge, to your halfway point, uh, most of your water flows easily across the first quarter and ends up in that second quarter where you want it. And the same goes on with our, our third and our fourth surges. If, if additional depth is desired, uh, you can run soaking surges after that where water is run most of the length of the field and those will actually continue to push the water deeper into your soil moisture profile. So in the, in the correct scenario we can we can see how surge irrigation uh, can really help you make your water go further. Uh, we can eliminate this deep percolation that we have going on here and we can cut back on the tail water we have going on there. Um, but also, often the studies are showing just that your, your uniformity across the field is significantly improved. Now, with any of these irrigation technologies we've been talking about today, there isn't a silver bullet. There's not something that's going to work the best every time, every place. Um, you know, there's going to be scenarios where continuous flow is going to be the ideal situation for, for that operation. And, and there's going to be areas where surge flow is really going to be able to have some benefits and because of this we're doing this research on multiple farms here in Utah to see the positive effects that it might have.
so we're there's there's some really cool research out there and we think there is good potential and and uh next year we'll have of course we'll have results that'll, that'll draw a good comparison between uh continuous flow versus surge uh we're also i mentioned hey oops there we go uh, I mentioned we're, we're also looking at some different scheduling adaptations. Uh, this is working with a, a farmer down in central Utah. Uh, his, his traditional plan is for his first cut of hay, he irrigates twice. For the second cut, he irrigates it once, and for the third, uh, once again. And, and so our, our question uh, was, well, what happened, you know, on a dry year, where, where's your best time to, to cut back if you had to? And so this year, what we're testing is is on that second irrigation for the first for the first cut. Uh, so that second irrigation, you can see the the part of the map that isn't shaded there. So that just represents that that very west set. Uh, we left that unirrigated, and we only have one cut of uh, data off that so far. Second cut will be coming off this week, uh, but in that first cut, it actually did reduce yield a little bit about. 0.14 tons, uh, which would have been about 23 bucks an acre. So it is pretty, pretty significant. Um, so that's something that we're, we're doing some research with him on. Uh, and I mentioned we're, we're trying some new technology and some of you've probably seen this. Uh, and you, you can't actually see it in the video, but I, I sort of point to it, but, but each of these wet stakes, they have a name to help you identify them. And, and this one in particular, this is Violet. So I'll tell you what, what she does here. So one technology we've been working with this year is called the wet stake based out of Idaho. Uh, this one in particular, her name is Violet. And what Violet does for us is there's a built-in sensor in the bottom to sense when, it re when water reaches it, at which point it then sends you a text message. And it's a very simple thing to set up in the field. You just Peg it in like that and turn it on. It's got a solar panel on top that maintains its charge the entire season. And the sensor in the bottom is calibrated so that every time it rains, you aren't getting a text message about that either. So the biggest complaint that we've got about the wet stake or similar systems typically comes from the spouses of the irrigators. They get a text message from Violet or Elizabeth or Candy in the middle of the night and they're up and gone. Now, there, are, there is one perk that you can get built into the wet stake, and that's a humidity sensor. So on a night where you're not sure if you can go bail, you can text your wet stake and find out what the humidity is in the field, potentially saving you a trip and waking up your spouse for no good reason. So what we've been doing with these is we give them to a, a number of the farmers we're working with to just to try them out and see if it helps reduce their trips to the field or if it helps them... Uh, you know, shut their water off sooner. So, so we cut back on a little of that tail water. Uh, you can also see it could be helpful setting up your surge irrigation where you need to know when you're at each point of the field. Um, so that, that's what we're doing with those. 